Hi, this is a quick movie taking you through how to set up Micromanager for a multi-dimensional experiment. So, I've downloaded the latest version of Micromanager from the website and I'm running version 1.3.46. On the system at the moment I've got a Photometrix CoolSnap HQ2, I've got a prior ProScan 3 which is running an XY Stage, Focus Drive, uh, Excitation Filter Wheel and a Shutter. Um, obviously the first thing you're going to need to do is also make sure that you've got the latest version of PV Cam running to control the cool snap, which can also be down downloaded from the Photometrics website. Um, when you're configuring Micromanager, the easiest thing to do is open up the software and you'll see this configuration screen here to start off with. Um, if you go for the None, then we can create a new configuration file, which is the best way to go. So if I click OK, it'll open up the ImageJ software here and we'll get our control dialog box over here. Um, if you come to the Tools tab, you've got the Hardware Configuration Wizard, and this is where we're going to define all the various different components we've got on the system here. So I'm going to create a new configuration, and if I tick COM port 1 here, this is what I've got uh, the ProScan plugged into. It will give you defaults here for the board rate and so on. These are actually absolutely fine for the, for the prior hardware, but depending on which hardware you're using, obviously you'll need to check um, what's going to be best. And if we come in here, this is where we add all the different devices we're going to look to control. So, as I said, we've got a Photometrics CoolSnap HQ2 camera. So if we scroll down here, there will be some on the list. PV Cam, which is our Photometrics driver. So let's add that one in there and give it a name. So let's call it Cool Snap HQ2. Then we've got a prior XY stage. So let's add that one. And call it and give it a name, so close on prior stage. And then we've got a prior focus drive, so we'll add that. Okay, then I said we've got a shutter. Then we've got a prior filter wheel. And this is actually an excitation filter wheel, so let's name it reasonably intelligently and then the final thing which is worth always adding is um, you've also got on the list here um, a whole host of uh, dummy drivers and it's worth adding in the objective uh, dummy objective here because I've not got a motorized microscope I'm actually using Olympus BX51 but it's worthwhile adding in the dummy objectives because that means we can set objectives and create calibration files and all that sort of thing as well so let's add that one in there and just call it objective so, we've got all the various different components added in now, so let's click Done, and we can start working our way through the menus here. So if I click Next, then first thing we need to do is tell it which COM port all of the various different components are on. So I said it's just the ProScan controller and then it's plugged into COM1. So let's set all of these to COM1. And Next. And it's just talked and spun the filter wheel, so it's talking to that properly. Then let's set our default camera, our default shutter, and the focus drive and then work our way through the menus here the final menu which is worth looking at is this one here which is where we can start defining our filter positions and our objectives so on the system here I've actually got a 10 times and a 100 times objective and in terms of filter positions I've actually got loaded at the moment Dappy is at position 1 Bitsy at 2 and then Texas Red in position 3. So that looks fine to me. So let's just keep going. So you work away through the, through the menus and you get to find one here where it's going to test and save it. So let's just give it a name and we're going to call this one uh, Test 1 and sit save and test. And hopefully It'll spin the filter wheel and open close the shutter and it tells us everything's been installed correctly. So it says success here. Um, if there's any problems, it will come up and tell you where the problem is and you can work your way back through the menus and, and correct as you need to. So once you're happy, let's click exit there. And now we're in. So, first thing we need to do is set up the cameras. If I come to tools here and then go to device property browser, 
this will give us all the settings here and I can make a, I can make sure the camera is set correctly. So at the moment it's down as clear pre-exposed, so let's just quickly change that to clear pre-sequence. And everything else is as I want it for the camera, which is fine. So we can close that one. And then put an exposure time there. And let's just go live for a moment and it'll open up the shutter. And we can see I've got my nice live image here so I can move around and have a look at my sample. So that's fine. Everything's looking good there. So now I need to define some configuration settings. So to do that, if you come to Tools, sorry, if we come over to here and add a group to start off with, and this one's going to be my filter wheel. And then on our list here, you just need to tick what we're going to use in this group. So obviously we're just going to look, look to use this to change between our various different excitation filters. So somewhere here we've got excitation wheel label. So if I tick that one, and then click OK. You can see it appears up here in my list now, and that means I can move from Fitzy to Dappy, and it's moving the filter wheel around. And then we're going to add in another group, which is going to be for our objective. So, and give it a name. And then on our list down here, we should have objective label. So let's tick that one, and then click OK. And you can see I've got my uh, my 10 times objective set in there, which is absolutely fine. So everything's looking good now. I've got my filter wheel working. I can set my objective. It can open and close the shutter, and so on. So now let's look at setting up a multi-dimensional experiment. So if I come to my tools here and go to the multi-dimensional acquisition, you can see this is where I've got my various options for controlling time points, multiple positions, slices, channels, and so on. So first of all, let's set up the channels, and we're going to use the channel group is going to be our filter wheel which is what we defined up over here and let's add a new one and that's going to be my dappy and another one that would be my fitzy and a final one and this is going to be the texas red channel you can also give it a color over here so let's so this will mean that it tints the images so let's make that one blue for dappy let's tint the fitzy image is green and the texas red image is red we can also put an exposure time here so Let's just change that slightly and put in a 40 millisecond exposure for the DAPI. This is a nice bright sample I've got here, but obviously the DAPI is brighter than the other channels, so let's just put a slightly shorter exposure time for DAPI than the other two. So that's fine. So if I turn off time, multi point, and Z stack and just click acquire now, it should take a DAPI, Fitzy, and Texas Red image in my current position. So let's click go. And there's my three images that it's acquired. And we can review those now if we wanted to. In actual fact, let's have a look at them. So now if we come over to plugins here and you go to micromanager and open micromanager file, we can go to our acquisition data folder and this is going to be testing. And then click on that and it'll open up my image stack here. You can see it's actually not tinted the images very well so something's gone slightly wrong on our display here and all we need to do to correct that is go to the Fitzy channel, come down here to the brightness contrast enhancements and then reset it and then go to the text red channel, brightness contrast and reset it and now it's actually tinted the images correctly so you can see I've got my Dappy Fitzy Texas Red image there which I can look at which is excellent so if I wanted to now add in let's say time points I just take time points and enter in the number of time points I want so let's go for two and we'll have an interval between acquisitions of 10 seconds is fine next if I want to include Z stacks then we just need to tick the Z stack option here and we can go live for a moment and we can define the top and the bottom of the stack so let's roll up through focus a little bit and set that one and then roll down through focus and set the bottom and then you can enter in the number of slices you want so let's go for five there and then for multiple positions let's just roll us back towards focus a little bit we can take the multiple positions dialog box edit positions here and this is where we can add in positions so let's move the stage around a little to somewhere else on the sample that'll do and we can adjust the focus as well and then 
mark that position. So now I've got my two positions that I've set in. Um, all of these settings can be saved, obviously. <clears throat> Excuse me if I want to um, revisit and reload this experiment later on. So let's close that and let's give this one a name and we're going to call it Mat Test 1. So we're happy now. We've got two time points. We're going to take multiple positions. We're going to take a Z stack for each of the channels. We're going to keep the shutter open. I've got my three channels selected and I've selected where I'm going to save the images. So once we're happy, we can just start the acquisition. And you can see now we're rolling through focus for the DAPI. And now we've moved over to the Fitzy. And then finally, for the first position, we get our Texas Red images now. And as you can see, it's just going to work through all the various different positions based on the settings I've created up here. Um, I hope you found this video useful. If you get any questions, then please contact your local sales office or dealer. Thanks very much.